Well, good morning, or whatever time it is. It's morning for me here. I wanted to just do a little quick um, talk about where this channel originally started and a little bit about myself and a little bit about why I'm doing reviews on the stuff that I do reviews on. So back in 2014, I attended a conference in Toledo, Ohio, and it was a Messianic congregation. I ended up being so impressed with this that I uh, sold my house and I moved to be closer to this particular congregation. I worked for that ministry for about nine months and then I was working in the office at their call center pushing product and I flamed out. I was like, I can't do this. So prior to that, I'd been, I'd been uh, raised in a Pentecostal church till I was about 17 years old. I left there and I kind of drifted around a bunch of different denominations, some Calvinist, some Reform, some Arminian that were sensationist, uh, and then, you know, charismatic, mainly in charismatic circles. Although I did attend like a Church of Christ a couple of times, and I thought, this is weird, and I got out of there. So uh, the Messianic congregation was supposed to be my answer to, Eureka, I found it. You know, this is, this guy is, he's uh, teaching you know, ancient Judaism, and this is really the roots of the church. So it's kind of like Hebrew roots type stuff, and it exposed me to that. But it was very cultish, and I got out of it. But it did a lot of, like, damage to me, like, spiritually and psychologically. So I spent a period going through, like, a spiritual crisis when I left there in 2016. And I just started reading books, church history, and I started reading the... the um, anti-Nicene Fathers and the Apostolic Fathers. Um, I started reading like the Nicene Fathers and I got into some heavy theological texts because I had to decide, you know, is do I go towards Rome with this Latin theology or do I go East? Like which one's right? Because you start digging in deep when you start reading things about, for instance, the Filioque Way, which is the procession of the Holy Spirit from the Father, as the East teaches, or from the Father and the Son. So I had to read things like St. Photius and his uh, mystagogy of the Holy Spirit and get into some heavy stuff. So I was reading like Vladimir Lasky, you know, the mystical theology of the Eastern Church. And I was reading like Maximus the Confessor and a lot of St. Gregory of Palamas. I read things like the uh, Apodictic Treatises on the Procession of the Holy Spirit by St. Gregory of Palamas. It's just a lot, you know, a lot of like the exact exposition of the Orthodox faith by St. John Damascus. I was reading the Cappadocian Fathers um, and learning about Cappadocian triadology and monarchical Trinitarianism you know, and the Father being the RK or the Fount of Divinity and everything. And I was going online a lot to talk to other Christian communities, mainly Protestant, where they were talking about things and trying to engage with them. And it started out cordial, but after a while, I just lost patience with talking to people about the same thing over and over and over and over again and them not understanding or grasping it. So meanwhile, over here on the channel that I had, I was doing like a lot of theological talks and theological book re reviews or book recommendations. And I thought after a while, you know, I shouldn't even be doing this. There's a lot of things. Yes, honey. Yeah, so anyways, I was thinking I shouldn't even be doing this. I shouldn't even be talking about theology and whatnot because I was learning that there is a lot of things that I was teaching when I was a inquirer, which if you're an inquirer, you really shouldn't be talking because I guarantee you, you're going to look back and cringe, okay? Four years from now, you're going to look back and you're going to go, what was I, what was I saying? I was teaching this and that's wrong. I was teaching that and that's wrong. So that's kind of what happened to me. I was like, oh, all this stuff that I thought that I knew what I was talking about, I didn't know what I was talking about. And I still don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I know a lot more than I did then, but I guarantee you if I was to come on here and start teaching a bunch of Orthodox theology that I'd make mistakes because I just would. And that's, that's just who we are. 
So, yeah, I uh, after I left that Messianic ministry, I kind of went back and tried to reinsert myself into regular Protestant world, and I was lay preaching at a Pentecostal church every other week for like two or three years while I was trying to attend an Orthodox uh, parish at the same time. So I'd go to the Pentecostal church one week and I'd preach to these people because I was asked to preach while I'm going to an Orthodox church on the weeks that I'm not preaching. And it very quickly I had to make a choice between these two worlds and I just felt like the Pentecostal world that I was in, I didn't even believe in it anymore. It was a lie. I'm going to tell you the minute that I was done, when I knew I was done. I was up front. This was in 2018 when the um, the right to return for the Pen the Palestinian people, like they were marching towards the, the border fence in Israel. And there was just a slaughter. I mean, these people were getting, they were getting shot at the security fence. And I was looking at this going, this is a pe peaceful demonstration. And there's UN, there's United Nations reports on this as well, okay, where you can find. But part of that whole world that I was in is very much they believe in dispensational theology. Or even if they don't believe in dispensational theology, um, they still are supporting the state of Israel because they believe that biblically they're supposed to, like they have to. And whether they realize it or not, they are just putting forth this case from... Um, from uh, this guy named Cyrus Schofield from the Schofield Reference Bible, which you can look into the history of that. I'm not going to get into all that there today. But what I was doing was I was I was I was really saying that uh, what was happening there that this that they don't really that it was a tragedy, right? Like this shouldn't be happening. And I got told afterwards. I wouldn't question Israel, brother. If you curse those people, you know, you bless. The, I will bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. And I was getting told that I needed to shut up and stay quiet and that I wasn't allowed to question um, the Israeli government's policy of, you know, um, what do you want to call it, collective punishment of, you know, like, the, for instance, like bombing a, 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 bombing a place and killing a bunch of civilians just to kill one terrorist. Now, I know the United States does it too, and I've also questioned that, so spoke out against it. But people coming up and telling me that, I, you you know, I don't know, you're, you sound like you're being anti-Semitic. I was like, I'm out of here. And that was kind of the minute when I had a complete break. But uh, I'm getting off on a side tangent. just want to say, if you really want to learn Orthodox theology, right, then you need to get involved in parish life, talk to a parish priest, and form that relationship one-on-one. -on -one. Um, don't try to insert yourself as a teacher. Don't go online and make a bunch of videos because you don't know what you're talking about. I guarantee you don't know what you're talking about. And uh, number three, engaging with Protestantism, with Protestants, with Catholics, most of them don't have the theological framework to even begin to understand what you're discussing. So that leads me to like why I'm making book reviews and movie reviews here because it's really not my thing. Generally, the reason why I do that is to keep myself intellectually stimulated because since I'm not talking theology with people, which is really my passion and the thing that I, I really want to uh, talk about, and I can't do that, I have to find some outlet for myself to stay busy. Otherwise, I'll go insane. So, yeah, that's it. Um, the priest, my parish priest, kind of helped me fill that void. I would talk to him about theological questions that I had, but he moved. He got transferred by the bishop um, back in, I think it was June or July, and we have a new parish priest, and I just don't have the same relationship with him that I had with the previous priest at my parish. And it's just, uh, so I don't have that outlet anymore to be able to talk to somebody. And um, yeah, it's just been really difficult, especially with a lot of the tragedy that's happened in my parish. We had two subdeacons that died. Uh, 
blessed memory to um, Brian and Subdeacon Patrick. Uh, one of them died from COVID-19. The other died a year later from cancer. And then I lost my, my parish priest. So it's just been really hard. It's been hard. And I don't go online and vent about all these problems to people. But, uh, yeah, if you want to talk about, if you have questions about Orthodox theology or Orthodox book recommendations or something, if you're an inquirer, um, I will try to direct you to resources in the comments section. I can lead you to, like, here, maybe you should go read this. But really what you need to do is form a relationship with a priest and get that one-on-one -on -one person that you can talk to, okay, okay? That's really the most important thing. You need a spiritual father. All right. God bless. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.